हेलो एंड वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई एम पीयूष कुमार कमलेश फैकल्टी ऑफ फिजिक्स जयपुर नेशनल यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर मोस्ट ऑफ दी स्टूडेंट्स थिंक दैट देर इज़ नो नीड ऑफ फिजिक्स वैन वी आर स्टडिंग बी टेक और बैचलर ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग बट वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट फिजिक्स इज द फाउंडेशन बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द ब्रांचेज हैव बीन इवॉल्व आउट थ्रू दिस सब्जेक्ट सो फिजिक्स यू ऑल्सो नो दैट फिजिक्स इज द नेचुरल साइंस विच मेक अवर लाइफ इजियर एंड मोर इंटरेस्टिंग हेयर वी विल डिस्कस the engineering physics it is the part of our integral it is the integral part of our syllabus so i will discuss some examples here uh, have you ever seen when we put some oil drop on water or have you ever seen a soap bubble uh, it looks uh, like colorful when we see it and besides this it changes the colors when we see it from the different angles so why is it so it is the phenomenon of interference yes it is uh, our first unit of the syllabus interference in interference we will study uh, the two light waves emerging out from two different sources superimposing each other the principle of super uh, uh, the principle of superposition states that this phenomenon is known as interference <coughs> so basically interference is the interaction or superposition of two light waves having approximately same frequency and same amplitude emerging out from two coherent sources <coughs> suppose there is a light beam propagating in positive x direction another light beam propagating in the negative x direction this direction so when they superimpose the resultant amplitude changes and it becomes like this this phenomenon is during superposition and after superposition both of these light beams travel in the direction of the in the initial in their initial direction suppose this was beam 1 this was beam 2 so this is beam 2 now propagating in the negative x direction this is beam 1 now propagating in the positive x direction okay so this is the main uh, point of focus in which the disturbance in which the amplitude of the resultant wave changes according to the phase of these two waves suppose one more example here this is wave 1 propagating in the positive x direction and this is wave 2 propagating in the negative x direction so what will happen here we are seeing that these two have different phases so during superposition if the amplitude of both the waves are same we will look like this there is no vibration and after superposition this is second wave and this is first wave they continue to travel along their initial path this phenomenon of interference was successfully explained in the very famous experiment young's double slit young's double slit experiment by thomas young in 1802 by thomas young so before uh, proceeding this experiment we should understand some basic terminologies which we will going to study during this unit first is high gain principle high gain wave theory high gain is stated that if uh, i can write it uh, in three points number 1 all the points on the primary wave front
एक्ट एज सेकेंडरी वेवलेट्स नंबर टू ऑल दीज सेकेंडरी वेवलेट्स moves with the speed of light in all possible directions and number 3 the line joining all the tangents of secondary wavelets propagating in the forward direction the line joining all the tangents of secondary wavelets propagating in the forward direction makes secondary wave front so these are three assumptions of eigen's principle we can understand this uh, by this figure uh, in uh, the first portion you see that there is spherical wave front the middle path shows that uh, there are some points 1 2 3 4 on this wave front and uh, this circle showing the circles are showing that in time t in time t with the velocity of light it moves some distance which is covered by the radius of the circuit okay so uh, the p dash q dash or this p1 q1 is uh, representing the uh, the secondary wave front which is you can see which is the tangent of all these circles similarly we can see from this linear uh, linear wave front that these are some points 1 2 3 4 on this wave front pq and this circle denotes the secondary wavelets it is propagating in the all the directions so it the in the forward direction the line joining the tangents of all these circles is known as secondary wave front here the uh, the point which uh, we should uh, uh, consider that that the tangent uh, in the backward direction we will not consider for secondary wave front because uh, we will assume that or we can see that all the waves are propagating in the forward direction so uh, all the secondary wavelets will be in the forward direction only there is no secondary wavelet in backward direction second point which we have to understand is the phase difference for this uh, we must understand what is phase first so phase is actually the quantity uh, which gives you all the information about the displacement of the particle uh, in a medium and it is represented in the brackets uh, of the equation of a wave okay so phase difference is suppose there are two waves having two different quantities in the brackets so they will called out of phase out of phase out of phase means the phase difference between two waves is not zero this is if this phase difference is 180 degree or you can say pi radians then these two waves are out of phase and when two waves 
and when two waves having zero degree phase difference then these two waves will called in phase okay so two waves are out of phase out of phase if they have phase difference of pi or phase difference of 180 degree and two waves are in phase if they have phase difference of 0 degree fine second point which we uh, third point which we are going to learn here is path difference path difference suppose there are uh, there is a source s and uh, there is a screen here okay uh, you may assume there are two sources s1 and s2 and a screen here suppose a light beam is reaching at this point p from source s1 and from source s2 there is another light beam reaching at this point p of the screen and this is the wave like this and this is the wave like this okay so you can see here path of both the beams is different the difference between these two paths will known as path difference there is a relation between phase difference and path difference uh, we know that if a wave completes one cycle then it travels a distance of lambda which is called the wavelength of the wave and the change in the phase of this uh, wave is 2 pi so we can say that lambda path changes the phase 2 pi so unit uh, change in the phase due to unit path will be 2 pi by lambda so change in the phase due to a minimum uh, due to a minor path delta will called the phase difference and it will be 2 pi by lambda into delta so the relation become phase difference equal to 2 pi by lambda into path difference this is the relation which we will use many times in the further study of this unit okay now we come to the point of coherent sources coherent sources are those sources which have approximately same wavelength same amplitude and the most important condition is they are uh, main, they maintain a constant phase relationship okay so three points must be there same frequency almost same amplitude and maintain a constant phase relationship so these are coherent sources so interference without these coherent sources inter phenomenon of interference is not possible in general we do not have two different sources which are coherent so we have to produce them artificially so there are two methods of production of coherent sources which uh, we will study later i am just telling you the names of those two methods number 1 is division of wave front and the other one is division of amplitude we will discuss uh, two or three experiments related to each method later so now uh, we come to the point uh, very famous experiment young's double slit experiment in his experiment young uh, young explained that there are 
two sources generated by a single source S. Suppose uh, this is the spherical wavefront. Uh, these uh, yellow and uh, red line are showing you the crust and trough of this light and this S1 and S2 are two light sources which are coherent because these are produced by the same light source. So, what we see in this figure that uh, both the coherent sources having a spherical wavefront in which yellow and red uh, half circles or red uh, wavefronts are uh, crest and trough suppose for a second then what we see here that when this crust intersect the crust of another source or the trough of one source intersect with the trough of another source then these points then these points make the maxima and when crust of one source intersect with the trough of another source or trough of one source intersect with the trough of another source uh, crust of another source then it makes minima maxima means there is increase in the intensity at those points minima means there is decrease in the intensity at those points so when interfere interference occur then there is redistribution of intensity of light okay suppose there is a single light source so what will happen there will be same intensity at a particular distance on all the points but when a coherent source comes into its path then there is redistribution of the intensity of light then at some points we will see maximum intensity and at some other points we will see minimum intensity of light so this is Young's double slit experiment. Now we will see the analytical treatment of this experiment. How uh, mathematically it solves. It shows that uh, how we can see that at some points we will get the maximum intensity and at some other points we will get the minimum intensity. Suppose there are two waves having displacement y1 equal to a1 sin omega t and having displacement y2 equal to a2 sin omega t plus theta. Okay, where this omega t is the phase of first wave and omega t plus theta is the phase of second wave. So, what will happen when the superimpose? The resultant displacement during the superimposition will be the algebraic sum of the displacement of these two waves y equal to y1 plus y2. So, this y will be a1 sin omega t plus a2 sin omega t plus theta. Now, to, ex, uh, to solve this equation, we will have to expand sin omega t plus theta. So, it will be y equal to a1 sin omega t plus a2 sin omega t plus theta is how much? Sin omega t cos theta plus cos omega t sin theta. We will expand this equation i1 sin omega t plus a2 sin omega t cos theta plus a2 cos omega t sin theta. In these two terms, we here see sin omega t is common. So, we will take it out sin omega t in the bracket we will get a1 plus a2 this is till here cos theta plus a2 cos omega t sin theta this is y equal to now to solve this equation we will assume that a1 plus a2 cos theta is a cos phi 
एंड ए टू साइन थीटा इज ए साइन फाइव सो वॉट विल वी गेट सपोज दिस इज इक्वेशन वन दिस इज इक्वेशन टू सो नाउ वॉट वी विल गेट वाई इक्वल टू ए वन प्लस ए टू कॉस थीटा इज ए कॉस फाइव तो ए कॉस फाइव साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस ए टू साइन थीटा ए टू साइन थीटा इज ए साइन फाइव ए साइन फाइव कॉस ओमेगा टी वी कैन टेक आउट दिस ए कॉमन सो इट विल बी ए एंड दिस विल रिमेन इन द्रैकेट कॉस फाइव साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस साइन फाइव कॉस ओमेगा टी वी कैन राइट इट एज साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस फाइव वाई इक्वल टू दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री हियर वी कैन सी दैट दिस इक्वेशन लुक्स लाइक the equation which we have uh, the equation of initial waves y1 equal to a1 sin omega t or y2 equal to a2 sin omega t plus theta so it looks uh, similar this is the equation of resultant wave <coughs> now we have to calculate the value of a and phi so these values can be calculated by these two equations equation 1 and equation 2 if we square and add these two equations we will get a1 प्लस ए टू कॉस थीटा होल स्क्वायर प्लस ए टू साइन थीटा होल स्क्वायर इक्वल टू ए स्क्वायर कॉस स्क्वायर फाइव प्लस ए स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर फाइव वैन विल वैन वी विल टेक कॉमन ए स्क्वायर इन द ब्रैकेट इट विल बी कॉस स्क्वायर फाइव प्लस साइन स्क्वायर फाइव विच विल बी वन सो इट इज ए स्क्वायर नाउ सो ए स्क्वायर इज ए वन स्क्वायर प्लस ए टू स्क्वायर कॉस स्क्वायर थीटा प्लस टू ए वन ए टू कॉस थीटा दिस इज द एक्सपेंशन ऑफ दिस ब्रैकेट एंड इट विल बी प्लस ए टू स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर थीटा नाउ दिस इज ए टू स्क्वायर कॉस स्क्वायर थीटा दिस इज ए टू स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर थीटा वैन वी विल टेक ए टू स्क्वायर कॉमन इट विल अगेन इन द ब्रैकेट कॉस स्क्वायर थीटा प्लस साइन स्क्वायर थीटा विच विल बी वन so a square will be a1 square plus a2 square plus 2 a1 a2 cos theta this a square is intensity of the resultant wave we know that intensity is proportional to the amplitude square so it represents the intensity of the resultant wave so i equal to Uh, this a1 is the amplitude of first wave so if we write the in, uh, intensity of first wave by i1 then a1 square is i1 a2 square is i2 a1 a2 is square root of i1 i2 cos theta this is the expression for resultant intensity of the wave and from this expression we can calculate the resultant amplitude what will be if a square is equal to this much then a will be square root of this term okay so this is equation number 4 and this is equation number 4 and this is equation number 5 now we can calculate uh, the angle phi in the equation first and second it was a1 plus a2 cos theta is equal to a cos phi and a2 sin theta was a sin phi so if we divide this was equation 1 this was equation 2 if we divide equation 1 by equation 2 what will we get this equal to this upon this okay so this a will be cancelled out by this a if we reverse this equation sin phi upon cos phi is tan phi then it will be equal to a2 sin theta upon a1 plus a2 cos theta by this equation we can calculate phi it will be 
phi equal to tan inverse a2 sin theta upon a1 plus a2 cos theta. So these were two unknown quantities in the equation of resultant uh, uh, intensity uh, a and phi which are now a was equal to a square root of a1 square plus a2 square plus 2a1 a2 cos theta and phi is tan inverse a2 sin theta upon a1 plus a2 cos theta. So uh, the unknown quantities have been solved now. Now if we see the maximum and minimum intensity then we see that first we have to write the in, uh, equation of resultant intensity again i equal to i1 plus i2 plus 2 is square root of i1 i2 cos theta. So what will be the maximum intensity? For maximum intensity this cos theta must be maximum and the maximum value of cos theta is plus 1 and for which value of theta this cos theta will be plus 1 it will be for 0 2 pi 4 pi means we can write it as plus minus 2 n pi where n is equal to 0 1 2 3 and so on. So these are the phases. So when we put cos theta equal to plus 1 here what will we get i equal to when we can say it i maximum equal to i1 plus i2 plus 2 is square root of i1 i2. So what we see here that the maximum intensity is not equal to the sum of the intensity of individual waves. It is greater than the sum of the intensities of individual waves. i maximum is greater than the sum of the intensities of individual waves. Why which amount? A square root of 2 i1 i2. Okay. Similarly, we can calculate the minimum intensity. So for minimum intensity, what will be the value of cos theta? It must be minus 1. Cos theta must be minus 1. And for what values of theta, cos theta is minus 1, it is odd multiple of pi. For odd multiple of pi, cos theta is minus 1, where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So when we put cos theta is equal to minus 1 here, we will get minimum intensity, i minimum. How much? i1 plus i2 minus 2 is square root of i1 i2. We can see here that minimum intensity is less than we can write it as a square root of i1 minus a square root of i2 whole square. So minimum intensity is less than the sum of i1 plus i2 or it is just the difference uh, of the square root of the intensities. Okay. So at some points we can see the intensity is maximum where theta is even multiple of pi and at some points where theta is odd multiple of pi we will get minimum intensities. So what will be the graph of the intensity dis uh, intensity distribution it will look like this this is the maximum intensity i maximum and this is the minimum intensity i minimum. If we have same amplitude of both the waves that is a1 is equal to a2 then intensity of both the waves will be same then i maximum will be i1 plus i2 to means i plus i plus 2 square root of i1 i2 means 2i it will be 4i and i minimum I minimum was I1 
means i plus i2 means i minus 2 square root of i1 i2 means 0. So, when we have two waves of same amplitude, we will get maximum intensity equal to 4 times of the intensity of one wave and minimum intensity equal to 0. Thank you for watching this video. In the next lecture, we will discuss more experiments related to different uh, method of uh, creating the wavefronts. Thank you.